Welcome back to Carolina Journal Radio. I'm Donna Martinez. Each year, some North Carolina public school teachers leave the profession, leave the system. We know how many leave each year and have at least a glimpse of why through the annual report on the state of the teaching profession. That new report has now been released to the State Board of Education. Dr. Terry Stoops of the John Locke Foundation is here to review the data. Terry, welcome back to the program. Thank you. So there's two different categories. It's kind of interesting. One called attrition, one called mobility. Give us a sense of the numbers. Sure. Well, last year, the attrition rate was 7.5%, and the mobility rate was 4.5%. And the fact that the report fleshes out those two numbers is important because in the past, there was one teacher turnover rate that was provided by the state. And of course, that was much higher uh, because it combined the mobility rate, which is the percentage, the number of teachers that are moving from one public school to another, and the attrition rate, uh, the number of teachers that are leaving the profession. And uh, so the fact that the report fleshes out these two numbers and separates them and categorizes them in the ways that uh, that are provided in the report it is an important point to make because I don't think uh, many people would be concerned concerned about public school teachers moving from one public school to another. Uh, that's just them deciding that one public school is a better fit for them than another. Uh, it's the attrition rate that people are really concerned about, and that's what I think is important to zero in on. What's your assessment of the rate? What does it mean? Well, that's the real question uh, that everyone wants to ask. Uh, is the attrition rate a reflection of how teachers feel about the profession? And it's really hard to say from the results of this report. What we can say is over the last three years, the attrition rate has declined significantly. Three years ago it was 8.7%, and last year it was 7.5%. That's a significant decrease. So that's the first aspect. The second is the largest category of teachers that are leaving are those who retired. And, of course, if they're deciding to retire, then they should be able to retire. Right. So that isn't the type of attrition that we would normally associate with dissatisfaction. These are teachers that have uh, the ability to be able to leave the profession and retire, and they and they do so. Really, the categories that we're most concerned about are teachers that are changing careers, teachers that are choosing to teach in another state or, or dissatisfied with teaching. And that's only around 1,600 teachers of the 7,000 that left the profession last year. So it's a relatively small percentage of not only the number of teachers that left the profession, but the total 95,000 teachers or so that taught in our public schools in 2018-19. So Terry, if someone leaves the profession and decides after two years, five years, 10 years that it's just not their thing, I mean, is that necessarily a bad thing? Would we want someone in a classroom who isn't totally committed and wanting to be there? Absolutely not. And and that's the good thing. That's the good part about attrition is that there are teachers that don't want to be in the classroom and that frankly aren't good teachers and we should want them to leave and get replaced by teachers that are higher performing. One of the real innovations in the report since they revised it a few years ago is that it started looking at the growth scores of teachers that remained in the profession and those that left. And what the researchers found is that the growth scores. This is the test score growth of students from one year to the next about whether they're growing one grade level or not. Find that teachers that leave have lower growth scores than those who stay. We want those teachers to leave because uh, that it's showing that they are not producing the type of academic results that their peers are producing. And so the fact that they are leaving the profession is actually a good thing. And really the hope is that schools will then be able to recruit teachers that will replace those ones that will provide a higher quality education for the students that remain in public schools. Terry, we for the past several years have heard a pretty consistent narrative from some of the uh, quasi-union activists and uh, the uh, education bureaucracy supporters that, well, North Carolina teachers just aren't respected by the members of the General Assembly and they're not paid well enough. And so they're leaving the profession in droves. As you mentioned, that attrition rate has gone down. But talk to us a little bit about teacher pay and where we were a few years ago and where we are today. 
Well, just to give a sense of how much average teacher pay has increased, between 2014 and 2019, the average teacher pay is up by 20%. And teachers, on average, are making around $55,000 a year. Uh, we'll get new teacher pay averages very soon uh, for this current school year. Uh, and that doesn't include the benefits, the, the significant increase in benefits that teachers have received over that same period. Now, if I were uh, someone that was leading a union effort, I would point out the fact that teacher salaries have increased and attrition has decreased and make the connection between the two. Uh, you could easily make the argument that the reason why more teachers are staying in the profession is because salaries have increased. Unfortunately, the North Carolina Association of Educators doesn't want to give any credit to the Republican General Assembly for raising teacher pay and therefore refuses to make that argument. Why not? I mean, I'm befuddled by that because um, they are essentially a worker rights movement. And if your workers, the members of, of the NCAE, are making more money, more money each year, wouldn't you want to celebrate that as a victory for your movement? You, you absolutely would, but the fact that uh, it's really dominated by party politics and the North Carolina Association of Educators has aligned itself with the Democratic Party, despite its uh, refusal to admit that fact, there's plenty of evidence out there that shows that there is a close alignment between the North Carolina Association of Educators and the Democratic Party, so the fact that the Republicans have been the ones responsible for raising teacher pay and uh, perhaps lowering the attrition rate uh, is not consistent with their partisan political views. And interesting that the bipartisan past state budget that Governor Roy Cooper vetoed actually had another teacher pay raise in it. and But that hasn't been implemented because he vetoed the budget. That's right. Now, just because the budget was vetoed doesn't mean that we won't see a, an increase in average teacher pay. Uh, it's important to remind the audience that teachers are paid based on experience and credentials, so any increase in the average number of years of experience or the number of teachers that have certain credentials that we pay a supplement for will increase the average. So it's possible that when the data comes out in February, uh, sometime in February, the Department of Public Instruction will release the data for the average teacher pay for the current year. We might see another average pay increase uh, even though we don't have the budget that uh, either the governor or, or the General Assembly wanted to pass. Terry, you are a former sc school teacher. Um, what do you say to someone who might be interested in the profession? What, what qualities do you tell them are important to have? And what about expectations for leading a classroom? Well, uh, a lot of, uh, of the best teachers that I have been around will say that it's about relationships with the students and understanding what the students' needs are and then creating uh, the curriculum and instruction around those needs. I mean, uh, and that's really true for anything that when you're dealing with kids, including parenting, for example, <laughs> that a solid relationship with that child will do wonders for the education of that child. So I would say say that if you feel like you can establish strong relationships with children and you have a mastery of the subject matter, you will be a successful teacher. And of course, that is exactly what we want here for North Carolina school kids. Terry Stoops is the Director of Education Studies, the Vice President for Research at the John Locke Foundation. You can read all of his analysis of education topics at johnlocke.org. Terry, thank you. Thank you.